Thank you, uh, Cahirlook. Um, uh, almost 25 years ago, um, as the Minister might remember, uh, the former Deputy Minister in this House, when he was Lord Mayor of Dublin, uh, Gay Mitchell, uh, he uh, put forward the idea that Dublin and Ireland should consider bidding for the Olympic Games. Uh, the proposal, of course, was controversial given the history of grossly inflated and costly football World Cups and Olympic Games. And some of these events, of course, have expanded even further and cost host countries vast sums since the early 1990s. The recent World Cup and Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, uh, for example, seem to symbolise the exploitation of host countries uh, by the wealthy elites running world football and Olympic uh, sports. Nobody can doubt that much of the expenditure which didn't go on lasting infrastructure in Brazil for the 2014-2016 events would have been far better spent on essential health and education services for the people of Rio, Recife, Sao Paulo and the other great Brazilian cities. The Athens Olympiad, of course, in 2004, did enable Greece to greatly upgrade its transport and other infrastructure, but the massive costs were a major factor in the growth of Greece's uh, huge national debt, which was greatly magnified by the subsequent EU-imposed austerity and debt repayment programmes. So the government and the Oireachtas uh, do need to very carefully evaluate the likely costs and benefits to Ireland from the proposed hosting of the 2023 uh, Rugby Football World Cup. Um, and uh, I, I, I'd be, I would be sympathetic to the general thrust of the amendments before us. Uh, the the uh, World Cup needs to be sustainable and extremely well run with very tight financial controls. But from what, I, what I've re read and heard, the proposal from my former colleague uh, Dick Spring and his Ireland 2023 Oversight Board seems to have tried hard to meet those necessary uh, strict requirements. Of course, the Irish people have already, through major funding of the GAA, the FAI and the Rugby Football Union, contributed to a network of stadiums across this island which are of very high quality and easily fulfil the criteria necessary to host this tournament. The GAA, whose Director General is a member of the 2023 Oversight Board, must be greatly commended for working closely with the IRFU and providing its iconic uh, stadiums such as Croke Park, Parky Cueve, uh, Casement Park and Fitzgerald Stadium to support the leading rugby grounds uh, such as the Aviva, Thomond uh, Park and, and Ravenhill Kingspan. The key sporting uh, infrastructure is therefore already in place and easily the equal of New Zealand or Wales, which hosted previous tournaments. A mention of Wales in 1999, Minister, of course, reminds us that Ireland was previously a co-host twice already of this tournament. It's striking that the cost of the bid fee for the Rugby uh, World Cup has escalated over the years from £66 million uh, pounds sterling for New Zealand in 2011, £80 million for England in 2015, and will be £96 million sterling for Japan in 2019. And this is expected to rise to £120 million sterling uh, in 2023. Uh, which could be the year it's held here. Um, and I, I noticed, uh, Minister, that the, the World uh, Cup, uh, the, um, the, the actual uh, Rugby World Cup company itself seems to be registered in the Isle of Man. And I'm not sure of the significance of that, but um, it's, it's uh, just an interesting um, uh, apparent fact. The uh, tournament company mentioned in Section 2 of the Bill, which will have the Irish Government, Northern Ireland Executive and the IRFU as shareholders, besides running the tournament, is underpinned in Sections 3 to 7 by a series of onerous financial support guarantees to the tournament owners, Rugby World Cup Limited. Uh, these include, in Section 3, underwriting the World Cup's operating budget of up to £120 uh, million, sterling, uh, million pounds sterling and providing for the advance of loans of loans if necessary to, uh, to the tournament company. Now, Section 4 provides, of course, for the purchase and disposal of commercial rights, uh, though we have no estimate of the likely cost-benefit of such rights. And Section 6 uh, commits the state to the provision of security, facilitation of participants in the tournament, public infrastructure and all the other requirements to stage the tournament. Uh, and I note, of course, there is a deadline for the Minister uh, to sign these guarantees uh, by July 31st next. So this bill does commit the state to considerable potential spending under its key provisions. And perhaps the Minister will further, um, during the um, uh, next stage discussion, especially inform the Dáil in relation to the likely costs and benefits under Section uh, 4, the commercial rights of the tournament. He might also enlighten us uh, as to the input, of any, that the Irish Government had into the feasibility studies and how the Irish uh, Government was consulted uh, originally on the original feasibility study and, and the follow-ups that the Committee, uh, I understand, have undertaken. Uh, 
Uh, I understand that Ireland's bid, of course, is targeting ticket sales of two million spectators, and that these sales will be, will be retained by the tournament company. And I would like to echo the comments made by uh, my uh, colleagues, Deputy uh, Boyd Barrett and, and Deputy Barry, in, in this regard. Uh, that obviously, um, obviously, it has to be a situation where uh, all supporters, the ordinary supporters of, of Leinster or clubs like Clontarf or, or um, Setonians in my own constituency, where they can actually go to the great games uh, themselves, to the major games. So, can the minister give us an estimate of what benefits accrue from the state from, from those sales and for the much more lucrative media, right, media rights and sponsorship? Uh, and again, of course, um, uh, the um, issue of the free tier has been uh, has been rightly brought forward by um, Deputy Ryan. The involvement of the Northern Ireland Executive, uh, Las Can, in this project is also important and noteworthy. It highlights, of course, the fact that the IRFU was able to maintain an all-Ireland identity after 1922, while the much more popular game of association football was sadly divided uh, when Southern soccer clubs formed their own football association. Uh, that all-Ireland quality of rugby football is now one of the game's most attractive qualities, as it has evolved in recent decades to become more than a game of the elite and upper middle, cla middle classes. Of course, in the professional era since the 1990s, rugby has generally flourished and more, uh, more reg most regions of the state now have a rugby football club. The exploits of the national team, of course, in recent decades and the performance internationally of uh, our four provincial professional clubs have greatly enhanced our national life. Indeed, the achievements of Leinster, Munster, Ulster and Connacht and the Ireland team have often lifted national spirits uh, in these austerity years since 2008. Um, and that's a major reason why, in principle, Minister, I'm uh, supporter of the bill and I wish Dick Spring and his bid oversight committee success on November 15th next. I understand that the World uh, Rugby Technical Review Group has already to carry out a two-day fact-finding mission to Ireland uh, and that this group will make a recommendation to World Rugby in October uh, and uh, I presume it will be their decision uh, whether or not we get it. Um, we are informed that um, the, um, it's claimed by Ernst & Young uh, that the England-Wales World Cup of 2015 was worth at least 900 million um, uh, sterling. Uh, pound sterling to the UK with a multiplier effect of up to two billion um, pounds sterling. 2011 World Cup in New Zealand is said to have generated net pro profits of 120 uh, million pounds sterling, with a net profit for England Wales 2015 of about 220 uh, million uh, pounds sterling. The proposers also rightly stressed the role of the Irish di diaspora in supporting the Ireland uh, football and rugby teams, both of our great international teams, and the closeness of the Irish venues to the three British nations nations across the Irish Sea and indeed to rugby supporters in our competitor nation France. Uh, it's critical that the Irish World Cup Committee also proposes and delivers financial support for the future development of sport in the more deprived areas of our country and I echo pre uh, previous deputy statements. Uh, uh, for example, Minister, um, um, efforts are being made by Dublin City Council, by Fingal County Council and the other Dublin local authorities to develop the game of rugby football in lower income areas where the game was traditionally unknown, uh, but these efforts they need very significant and major support uh, and indeed all those financial benefits of course from the event should also be earmarked uh, for the many uh, Gaelic games, uh, soccer, boxing, athletics and other sports clubs in areas where facilities are minimal and non-existent uh, and I know you've been uh, very open to receiving delegations from uh, sports clubs in some of the lower income areas uh, where there are you know, absolutely no facilities and where uh, val uh, for example in boxing where very valiant groups of coaches are perhaps uh, um, supporting um, 50 or 60 children and youths and giving them an outlet in life uh, on, on a total shoestring and without a proper headquarters. So I think that some of the funding from this has to go, has to go back into communities and particularly our more, most deprived uh, communities and indeed ac all across this island uh, from, from West Belfast uh, to Northside and Westside Dublin. Ireland ha of course has had a shockingly poor record since 2008 in the provision of essential infrastructure, a uh, point uh, Deputy O'Snoddy just made a few minutes ago. Most years since the crash, the government has barely reached depreciation and essential replacement levels of investment in health, education and transport facilities. And due to continuous lack of investment, much of our roads and other infrastructure, of course, are crumbling. Most of all, the virtual cessation of housing supply has crippled our society and left thousands of families and individuals homeless. Uh, and Ireland needs targets to reach for uh, and attain uh, to encourage badly needed investment. So whether or not the World Cup bid is successful, uh, and uh, I, I hope it, it, it very much that it is successful uh, and, and will be um, um, successful over, I think it's South Africa, isn't it, and France. We must greatly, <coughs> greatly expand a national investment programme. So, uh, but the summer of 2023, Minister, it's a reasonable target date to set 
for at least a, f a first phase of national regeneration, for example in transport, for to have the Metro North Line from Swords and the airport, uh, the Cross City Lewis, as we've talked about so many times in this House over the last two decades, in Cork City and Galway City, the building of the North West Motorway and the massive upgrading of roads like the N71 and N72, uh, you know, which are, I would consider today uh, kind of unsafe roads, basically. They should be priorities in your, in your part of the infrastructure brief. Uh, so th such projects will enhance, I think, Ireland's attraction for visitors of all kinds, including rugby followers, and will remain valuable for our people long after 2023. So it's a target to attain in other ways too. Uh, of course, finally, our constituents will question the necessity of the government underwriting you know, a major event, any major event or, or festival, and ask whether the event organisers themselves shouldn't simply take all the risks involved. Uh, you know, and if you look at the organisation of uh, World Rugby, uh, with you know, 10 or 12 uh, major co uh, countries um, uh, with, um, or uh, significant organisations and many other countries where the game is played, uh, people, people you know, would, tend, you know, would tend to feel that that, that should be the case for this event and indeed all events, but perhaps international institutions like the European Union and United Nations need to examine the whole structure of the organisation of major sporting events like the Olympics, the Football World Cup, the Rugby World Cup and indeed all the other major continental competitions. But I think the Bid Oversight Committee uh, under Dick Spring, it had to operate under the current ground rules for these events. I think they have made a huge effort uh, to get this competition for Ireland and I do wish them every success and I'll be supporting the bill. Thanks, Ken.